Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can map a texture onto a cube just like you would see in Minecraft. This tutorial is sponsored by me, kinda. It's actually sponsored by Zenderman which is a channel which I co-own and is based solely on Minecraft which fits in very well with this video. On this channel you can find all things Minecraft, whether it's exploring or building or just fun things in general. And there are a few other YouTubers that have helped me out. If you fancy being sponsored in one of these videos, just click on the join button below. Now, on with the tutorial. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to my channel on video game development. With that in mind, let's get to work. So for those of you who've used Unity at least for a small amount of time will know that whenever applying a texture to a cube it will just replicate that texture on each face of the cube and we can see here some look upside down, some look back to front. There is a way that we can manipulate a texture to apply to different faces of a cube. Now this texture right here is going to be mapped to the cube. However if we just apply it, it will just apply that texture once again to every face of the cube. Now there is an importance to this particular texture. It is a perfect square and you can break it down into nine equal squares. So for example if your texture was 1200 by 1200 pixels you would need to have nine equal squares of 400 by 400 pixels. Reason being is because in this case this is a nice perfect square so we need to map it correctly. And you can see here we have the first three squares are completely blank. These squares will not matter at all. They're irrelevant. They're never used. Only the bottom six squares will be mapped to each face of the cube. Now there is a specific order in all of this. Let's start with the very bottom left. This one is the front face. This one is the top face. This one is the back face. These two here are the right and the left. And this one is the bottom face of the cube. Now the way we do this is we manipulate the mesh in a C-sharp script to basically give it new coordinates to read and place each section of this texture. So if we press play, we'll be able to see that this cube is exactly just that. It's not mapped, it's nothing, it's just applied to it. So let's write a script which will map it for us. So let's right click, create C-sharp script, We'll call this one map texture and we'll open that up in Visual Studio. So double click and it will open up. So what do we need here? Well, we don't need void update because we only need this to run for once. So we'll need void start. So get rid of void update and get rid of annotations because we don't need them, at least not yet. Now, we're going to create two variables to begin with. The first one is going to be a mesh filter, and the second one is going to be a mesh itself. Like I said, the way this works is we're going to manipulate coordinates on the mesh using a vector2. So we need the script to recognize what exactly we're doing here. So firstly, let's say mesh filter, that is the variable, and we'll call it cube mesh, something really simple. Next what we'll do is we will define mesh and I guess we'll just call it mesh with a lowercase m because you know you don't want to overcomplicate things. So heading into the start method what we need to do here is we need to tell cube mesh to get the component for the mesh filter. So cube mesh equals get component and in spiky brackets mesh filter. Oh close bracket semicolon and then what we need to say is that mesh the actual mesh itself is equals to the cube mesh dot mesh now this makes things easier in the long run because we're then able to define things a little easier when it comes to the vector 2 so why are we using a vector 2 not a vector 3 although the scene is three dimensional i.e using a vector 3 what we're doing here is only in the second dimension. We're only dealing with an X and a Y here. We're not dealing with 3D because the texture itself is what we're dealing with, not the cube itself. Just keep that in mind. So let's declare a vector two, and it is going to be an array. So we need the square brackets, and we'll just call this UV map. 
and we'll make that equal to mesh.uv. So this is where the clever bit now comes in. We now need to map six different sections. We need to do the front, top, back, bottom, left, and right. And each of those sections comes in four lines of code. Now, uh, you probably won't see me type out the whole bunch of code because it is rather repetitive in that sense, but let's at least start with the front section and let's understand how these coordinates work. So firstly, let's put an annotation to say this is the front. And next we're going to say UV map and in square brackets zero. So this is the very, very first section. And we're going to make that equal to a new vector two. And in brackets, these are the new coordinates that we place. So we're going to have zero and zero because we're starting at the very corner. So that now means that we could theoretically copy that line of code and do the next line. So we're going to go one further down. Now, these numbers here in the array are important. So 0, 1, 2, and 3 will always refer to the front. 4, 5, 8, and 9 will refer to the top. 6, 7, 10, 11 refer to the back. 12, 13, 14, 15 refer to bottom. 16, 17, 18, 19 refer to the left. And 20, 21, 22, and 23 all refer to the right. Now, you notice it does get a little bit mixed up when it comes to the top and bottom and the reason for that is just to switch around part of the texture itself just to make it look even so the next section we do here is 0 0.333 now do you remember when i said earlier about the coordinates they are important you've got to remember that we're doing this in three sections so we have to find the first line down so there's think of it as two lines down the first one is going to be a third of the way along the texture. The second one is going to be two thirds of the way along the texture. We only need to deal with a third at the moment because this is the front. So keep that in mind whenever you go up or down. So 0.333 and 0.666 represent a third and two thirds. And those are the vital numbers. So it'll always be between zero and one. So realistically, the most you'll be typing here is a zero, 0 0.333, 0 0.666 and 1. Those are the vital figures to get everything in order. You may need to manipulate ever so slightly, uh, which we will do in this script, but it will still be pretty much a third of that texture anyway. So the next one is going to be number 2 there, and this will be 0 and 0 0.333F. And the last one of the front, which is 3, that is going to be a combination of both of these one and two. So that's going to be 0 0.333F and 0 0.333F right there. So those four lines of code will map that bottom left section, which is the front, to the front side of the cube. So now if we do the top, so let's put an annotation and put top. And now we start with number four. And this one is going to be 0 0.334. So we're going one extra. So one slight pixel extra to map this correctly rather than have overlay. So like I say, the reason we do that, go from 333 to 334, is to stop any overlay of pixels on the incorrect base. So we need to start this at 3334 and 0.333F. So once again, this is the top. So this is the next section along. It is the bottom middle square of our texture. So then we have five and five becomes 0 0.666, which I spoke about earlier, and 333. So if you think about this logically, you'll see at this point, all we're doing is setting actual coordinates of that texture. And it is a lot easier once you understand how the whole thing works. And I know it may be a little bit confusing, but I think by the time of the end of the tutorial, you may understand it a little bit more than when you did coming into this tutorial. So 
I said earlier, the top is four, five, eight, and nine. So we're going to do 0 0.334. And then that is also going to be, uh, that's going to be zero. Yes. So that's fine because we're doing the bottom section of the top here, if that makes sense. And nine. And this is going to be 0 0.666 F by zero. Now, what I'm thinking here is I may kind of skip over this a little bit because we understand how this is working. We understand that each face has four separate coordinates that we apply here. And I will show you the script when it is complete. And what I will also do is I will pin this script in the comment section below. So if you want this script, you can copy it from below. But I really would recommend you try and understand how it works rather than just copy and paste. So I'm going to go ahead and complete the rest of this script now. I will catch up with you guys momentarily. So when you get to the bottom, after all of that, the very last thing to do is to say mesh dot uv equals uv map semicolon and save. So all we've done there is we have mapped out each of the six faces of the cube according to the texture location and applied it directly to the cube. So if we head back into Unity now, let's wait for the script to compile. And then we just need to apply the texture, or rather the uh, script, to that texture on the cube. So, drag. Ooh, I did not mean to drag that. I meant to drag and drop that onto there. Now, nothing has changed because this will all go in runtime. So when we press play, we will see the cube has now changed. So that script has applied each of those sections of the texture to each of the six faces of our cube. And if I rotate that, you'll be able to see each one is done quite nicely. And if we rotate, we can see the top there and the bottom. Now, obviously, you can use a higher quality texture. Um, obviously, you know, it's if you want to do this accurately at, uh, let's say, um, 1024 by 1024, you would need to have... Uh, nine squares of 1024 pixels by 1024. As long as each of those nine cubes are the same size, this will work perfectly every single time. Like I say, I will leave the code in the pinned comment if you want to copy, but I really do ask that you try and understand how it works. It's all good and well copying code, but if you don't understand how the code works, it's kind of useless to you. So hopefully that has helped you out a little bit, guys, and... Maybe I will see you around in another tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.